That's awesome. For those yeah. listening, I, I, want, I want you to give some tips here because I think it would be helpful for those listening who maybe they don't have access to a gym. They're in lockdown. Mm-hmm. What are some, what would you say are some requirements, you know, from your experience being in Kenya? I mean, you built, again, an inc- a world-class physique. So mm-hmm. maybe you can give some inspiration, some tips for certain equipments they, they could use. Maybe exercises that you've done that you think, hey, this is what it was for me and look at where I am kind of thing. So, yeah. and of course, every situation is different, but I think it would be helpful for those listening coming from you. Yes. Yeah. So uh, I think the first thing is um, to know exactly your body type uh, because we have all these kinds of workouts uh, and they're not all for everybody. Everybody has, was born different. So you have to find like the best uh, workout that goes with your genes and so once you identify that, then just pick few workouts per body part and concentrate on those. There are some workouts that I, people do them all the time, but if you look at all my clips, you will never see me doing them. And so it's not like I don't like them, but I only go with what goes, that, that, that suits my, my, my genes. And number two is try not to imitate everybody. Yeah, don't do something because Meshak is doing it. Uh, <laughs> um, don't have like, that ego in the gym that, oh, uh, I have to lift this amount of weight. No, it's it's not about the weight. You can see me like uh, deadlifting 315, but that's me. I can do more than that, but there is a reason why I only do 315. So make sure that you, even if you have a coach, but have also be your own coach too and know where your limit is because most of the time people try to uh, try to go beyond their limit uh, thinking that is that's when they will achieve their uh, the result they want but this is bodybuilding this is not powerlifting it's it's about building the muscle it's not about how much you lift if you see me bench pressing like uh, 150 um, dumbbell look at the videos that I do I try to make sure that I do up five and above. So most of the time, if you cannot live, if you cannot do like five reps, then it means you are forcing yourself and you are putting yourself into getting some major injuries. And so avoiding injuries is one way of staying long and getting the result you need. Because most of the time people start training and within two years they have injury, then they cannot do this and this. Then you start stepping down. It's instead of going up, you start going down uh, because there are some now workouts that are important to your, um, to your physique, but because you have injury, you cannot perform them. So avoiding injuries, it's one major thing that have enabled me to be where I am today. I've trained for more than 20 years now, and um, I can tell you I'm um, one person that I don't have like any injury that I can say, oh, I, I have issue with this. I can do all the workouts with no problem because I listen to my body more than anybody else. I am my own coach. So when I, that right time that I feel like this is not right for me, then I will stop. Most of these injuries, people get them as a result of what they used to do when they were still, like when they were starting to live. Most people, when they start to live, they don't care. They don't want to listen. They, when you tell them this is too much, they will like, no, but somebody else is doing the same way. So they don't listen. Most people, when they start lifting, they don't want to listen. And this, this keep on building up. And after a few years, then you, you end up getting injury, which might not be uh, like easy to recover. So these injuries are from a result of what you used to do a few years back. Ah, mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Important. Now, for you specifically, Mm-hmm. You mentioned in the documentary that, of course, I mean, you are training hard. You tra- you have many years of training behind your belt. Yeah. Obviously, you're going to have little things that might pop up. You mentioned it in the uh, documentary that I was watching mm-hmm. of you of on uh, team, the team mm-hmm. hard body. Mm-hmm. And 
you said, yeah, sometimes you get like your back, it's not feeling so yeah. easy or your knee is not feeling so mm -hmm. easy. So what are mm -hmm. some ways that, that you have found to adjust for those things? And yeah, I think that would be valuable. So, yes. So it's normal to, uh, to feel some kind of weird pain uh, when you're training or after training. So the best thing is to listen to your body and know exactly what was the problem, like what workout you did that caused that pain. After identifying, like let's say you are doing squats and after doing squats, you start feeling like your hip is not feeling good. So you identify that specific workout, then just avoid that workout for a while. Avoid that workout. Don't keep on pressing or, or starting to do light, no. Just ignore that workout. And after a few years, after a few months, it will, it will heal itself. Uh, I've seen there, there was a time that um, I used to feel pain when doing a back squat. And this is something that I, I've noticed uh, so many times. When I do back squat, um, I don't feel my front quads. I don't feel like the soreness, the, the, the soreness on my front quad, uh, front quad. So I will feel mostly on my hip. I had to switch from doing back squat to uh, front squat. Uh, and nowadays, if you look at my workout clips, most of the time I do front squat instead of back squat. Because I feel like um, when I do back squat, most of the time I don't feel it. I don't feel it. I will feel it on my hip and it sometimes it will even bother me. So the best thing is to just stop that workout and do something else. There's so many workouts that you can pick and still be able to get the gains that you want. That is huge. And obviously I can relate and I'm sure many listening can relate to that. And yeah, folks, if you're hearing this, of course, yeah. do not force it. That is a don't. surefire way. Yeah. <laughs> Like that is a surefire way to get into trouble. Like you will risk yeah. hurting yourself. So of course yeah. you have that stubbornness, right? Like sometimes when, as a, someone who wants to make progress, you think you start to fall in love with a certain exercise or something like this, but yeah. you know, yeah. you know what I mean? You know, like, um, people tend to do what others are doing in the gym. Like right now, let's, uh, let's pick like a deadlift. I can do up to 500 pounds of deadlift, but uh, because I'm, I'm, watching, uh, I'm watching myself, I only do 315. And so it's not amount, the amount of weight, it's, it's amount of um, the stress that you are giving to your muscles. So if I can do uh, like 20 reps with 315, that's way better than doing uh, 500 for two, two reps. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. So yeah.